tricky stuff. So the fan comes with a plug which is not compatible with our motherboard. Therefore, I strongly suggest that you do order a plug adapter which will be compatible to our motherboard. Uh, since I don't have the patience for it and since I know many of you do not have it either, I have decided to show you how to do without one. Meaning we are going to cut the wires and replace it with a compatible plug. Now I have to warn you, if this is the first time you are going to handle open electrical wires, I would strongly suggest you do not follow the next steps and just order a plug adapter. Alright, if you're still here, let's dig right into it. This is our compatible 3 pin plug and this is where we are going to plug it into the motherboard. And without any further ado, let's cut off the old fans plug. Don't close your eyes, just cut it. The replacement plug comes with three colored wires, black, red and yellow. We are going to get rid of the yellow wire right now as it's not gonna be useful to this particular build. Only the black and the red wires will be connected to our little fan. And talking about the fan, the whole difficulty here is to identify its ground and positive wire. In our case, the two first wires marked in green on your screen will go. The two others, first one marked in red and second one in black, are the wires which will be connected to our new plug. The red wire represents the hot wire and the black one the ground wire. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, cut off the two first wires. And here you can see me testing indeed if the wires are correctly identified. Uh, you can see that the fan is operating normally, so I can go ahead and connect the new plug to the existing wiring. Once done, just make sure to use some electrical tape to isolate the open wires. You can also see that I am zip tying the excess cable and I have plugged the new 3-pin plug to the motherboard. Alright, so this is how it is done. So this will power your little fan. Worth knowing, we will not be able to control the speed of that fan through the motherboard. Uh, I have removed all the other wires, therefore no PWM function. Alright, if you are still alive, let's carry on with our connector bridge. Not much to it, it is simply an adapter which will make our life easier in connecting the casing peripherals to our motherboard. And here they are. They usually connect our power and reset switches, our hard disk drive LED and the power LED. When connecting our peripherals plugs to the bridge, please make sure to respect the polarity of every plug. The triangle on your plug represents where exactly the hot wire is located. Make sure it does match the power reset or plus sign on your bridge. I know it is a little bit confusing, but you really want to take your time so that we do not short our motherboard on the very first boot. And to make things worse, the plus and ground sign can result in connectors to sit in opposite directions, which is absolutely confusing, but that is how they have to be. Now that we're done with this, time to plug our bridge to our motherboard, and this will take care of our LEDs and power and reset switches. Behind our power supply unit hides the audio jack. This will fit the microphone and headphone jacks on our front panel case. When connecting it, make sure that all the pins align to the plug. And finally, we are going to plug in our USB 3 peripheral connector. Again, when connecting any plugs to the motherboard, make sure that the pin aligns with the plugs. Alright, almost there! Now uh, we are simply going to secure in place our water cooling controller hub onto our motherboard. And as you can see, I am using the Velcro patches which were supplied with the water cooling system. Preferably we would have the hub sitting outside of the case, but because we have such a small build, I will enclose it within the back panel. But every build is different, so just do whatever works best for you. And here's the last step of this video is to simply connect our three front facing 120 mm high pressure fans. And to do so, I am using a four way PWM fan splitter. Uh, simply said, I am uh, connecting all the individual fan plugs to every available splitter on my adapter. Its other hand will be connected to the PWM controller on the motherboard and on a four pin Molex coming from my PSU. And here we will take our PWM connector coming from our four way fan splitter and connect it on the available PWM connector 
connector on the top right hand corner of your motherboard.